Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials we are going to start a new topic uh, it's called biopolymers or natural polymers biopolymers are produced by um, microorganisms like bacteria fungus animals even plants so those are called biopolymers so they are naturally occurring sometimes uh, some people use this concept of biopolymers if uh, the monomer is also of uh, biological or natural in origin but i am going to talk only about uh, the polymer that's uh, of animal origin or uh, plant or uh, bacteria or fungal origin only so these biopolymers have several advantages and of course they also have disadvantages um, because they are biological in origin uh, they have uh, very good uh, um, properties such as uh, biocompatibility many of them also degrade that is biodegradability so these are some good properties but uh, the uh, problems of these biopolymers are uh, they have very very poor mechanical strength uh, mechanical properties so they cannot uh, be used alone on their own so they have to be blended with the natural polymers okay so we will talk about these uh, biopolymers so the polymers can be um, divided into two the natural okay and the synthetic okay the synthetic are i use a chemical uh, method for preparing okay like uh, polylactic acid polylactic glycolic acid polyethylene polypropylene polymethyl methacrylate polyethylene glycol polycaprolactam all these are um, polymers produced using uh, synthetic roots okay either we use a catalyst or we just do a uh, we do a condensation in the lab whereas if you look at the natural or the biopolymers they are produced uh, by animals or um, bacteria or fungus or even um, plant derived so these are called biopolymers are naturally they are naturally occurring so we have uh, two big groups the polysaccharides the proteins okay the polysaccharides means we will have uh, um, one of those uh, saccharide groups uh, like glucose or mannose connected in different uh, architecture uh, different molecular weight okay like um, the starch the alginate the chitin chitosan glucons all these okay they are polysaccharides that is saccharides means sugar proteins they have the um, the uh, protein bond that means the amide bond c double bond o n okay like collagen fibrin silk they all called protein okay so they have this uh, amide bond into their system so the natural polymers are polysaccharide based or protein based that means these are all based through sugar these are protein so as you can see because uh, the body um, contains a lot of proteins and sugars and many of these uh, uh, degradation cycles in the body make use of this so they nicely get absorbed and degraded in, in various uh, uh, cycles in the human system that is why they are biocompatible and also they are highly biodegradable and completely get eliminated from the system because they are sugar based or they are protein based so we are going to look at each one of them slightly in more detail and see their advantages disadvantages and where they are used some of these biopolymers are not really um, used uh, as of now in practical applications but they seem to have quite a lot of uh, uh, future potential okay so these are polysaccharides proteins polyesters derived from plant animal bacterial sources they are recognized by the biological environment okay so uh, like i said uh, sugar the many of these uh, cycles uh, metabolic uh, cycles in the body either go to have sugar sugars or uh, protein so they get channeled into those degradation processes and completely get eliminated so there is no question of uh, um build up uh, or accumulation um of these uh, biopolymers they are also have similar to the extracellular matrix components okay so they are high they will be highly 
hydrophilic in nature. Generally, they will be high, highly hydrophilic in nature and many of them are also soluble in water. Of course, there are some which are also not soluble in water. So, we will see some of those uh, uh, both the classes. So, the advantages they are biocompatible, they are recognized by the cell. So, you will have very good uh, cell adhesion okay, and cell differentiation. So, when I use uh, biopolymer based uh, uh, scaffolds, you can see very good uh, cell adhesion proliferation taking place unlike a synthetic polymer. So, sometimes what we do is we mix synthetic polymers and biopolymers to improve the cell adhesion process. Otherwise, uh, if you are using purely synthetic polymers, we have to make it very hydrophilic um, so that uh, cell adhesion is improved. Disadvantages of course, uh, they have very poor mechanical properties. So, they cannot take uh, much stress, um, they cannot have good flexural properties. Uh, uh, immunogenicity. So, obviously, uh, if they are derived from animal, the chances are there could be some um, uh, cross contamination, limited supply, we cannot have large amount. For example, if you are talking at polyethylene, uh, polyethylene is manufactured uh, through the petrochemical route. So, you can make uh, tons and tons of uh, polyethylene, whereas uh, if I am talking about say hyaluronic acid, okay, that is a biopolymer. And, uh, it, you can have only limited supply from uh, a bacterial source. So, that is a big uh, issue about these uh, biopolymers, the limited supply. Uh, Let us start from each one of them, these polysaccharides. These polysaccharides are linked, uh, several monosaccharides are linked together you, through these glycosidic linkages. This is called a glycosidic linkage. Okay? So, we have this oxygen. So, we have a polysaccharide here, I mean sorry monosaccharide here, another sugar here, another sugar, they are connected. So, obviously, uh, this is called the glycosidic linkage. Okay? So, you can have a alpha linkage, we can have beta linkage, uh, we can have a alpha 1, 4 depending upon how these two adjacent uh, um, monosaccharides are connected, we can have alpha 1, 6, we will look at them each one of them. So, this is called the glycosidic O glycosidic linkage. And um, here we have one sugar, another sugar monosaccharide, they are connected as you can see here. So, we can have alpha type of connection, beta type of connection, we can have 1, 4, 1, 6, uh, 1, 3 and so on actually. So, these are derived from renewable sources like plants, animals, microorganism. They can be used in regenerative medicine, tissue engineering. So, they form a very good scaffold. So, if you are thinking about a biodegradable scaffolds, um, this is very good, but then of course, they will have poor mechanical strength. Uh, for example, if you look at starch, okay, uh, they are used uh, uh, by plant cells, okay, they exist in two forms. Okay, before that, let us look at this alpha 1, 4 and alpha 1, 6. So, look at this. So, if we have a, this is called the, um, okay, this is called the alpha 1, 4 linkage. Okay, this is called the alpha 1, 4. In an alpha, uh, the OH is below, as you can see below these uh, two um, monosaccharide link and uh, this is called the alpha 1, 4 linkage. As you can see 1 and here this is the fourth, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is called the alpha 1, 4. That means two adjacent monosaccharides are connected um, if uh, one and then you have the 4 and when you say alpha, the hydroxyl is below this 2. Okay? If you look at the alpha 1, 6 linkage, this is called the alpha 1, 6 linkage. Okay? Okay? So, as you can see, this is 1 and uh, 5, 6. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there is a connection between the um, first carbon in one monosaccharide with the sixth carbon in another monosaccharide. So, we count like that. So, the oxygen becomes 0, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that. So, we have alpha 1, 4 linkage and we have the alpha 1, 6 linkage. Okay, so now, if you look at starch, starch used by plant cells exists in two forms. One is called the amylose, is the helical form of starch containing only alpha 1, 4 linkage. So, it will be like this straight line um, with this type of uh, linkage alpha 1, 4. Okay. You can also have another form alpha 1, 4, but after every 30 monomers, you will have one alpha 1, 6 bonds. That is alpha 1, 4 with branched alpha 1, 6 at about every one in 30 monomers. So, when we have alpha 1, 6, 
it's like a branching happen because here you can have alpha 1 4 happening here right so alpha 1 4 um, will be like a straight line okay so it can form a helical whereas when you have once in a while alpha 1 6 you are going to have this type of branching that's taking place actually okay so you understand the concept of 1 4 1 6 okay so 1 4 is so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this is 1 so this is a 1 6 bond 1 4 is this is 1 and 1 2 3 4 so this is the 1 4 bond um, if uh, the oxygen is below the planes of these sugars then it's called the alpha okay we i'll show you the beta form also later uh, because glucons uh, are in the beta linkage okay so once more um, here in the alpha the oxygen is uh, below these uh, monosaccharides like starch, glycogen and so on whereas in beta when the OH is above the plane so you can see this OH is above like cellulose okay glucon all these are um, beta linkage okay so the OH is above the plane whereas here the OH is below the plane okay so the glycosidic bond happening below the plane whereas the, here the glycosidic bond is above the plane. So this is again 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 1, okay. So this is again 1, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is a 1, 4 beta linkage. This is 1, 4 alpha linkage. You can see the difference, okay. Now you know how to um, nomenclature it. This is taken, this picture was taken from this reference. Okay, so starch, cellulose, gums like arabino, galactan, gover gum, gover arabic, these are from plants. From algae you have alginates, galactans, carrageenan. From animals we have a chitin, chitosan, glucose, I mean glycans, hyaluronic acid. From microorganisms we have dextran, gelan gum, pulalan, xanthan gum, bacterial cellulose, curdlan, cyclic glucon, linear glucon and so on actually. So let us look at uh, hyaluronic acid. This is uh, um, obtained from uh, uh, cell bacteria, okay. So hyaluronic acid, it's a D-glucuronic acid. This is called the D-glucuronic acid, okay. So you can see the acid, D-glucuronic acid with N-acetyl D-glucosamine. So this is the acetyl group, CH3CO is called the acetyl group. This is the amine group, so N-acetyl D-glucosamine linked by beta 1 3 linkage okay this is 1 okay 1 2 3 okay so you understand 1 3 linkage so hyaluronic acid is made but made up of glucuronic acid um, d glucuronic acid and n acetyl d glucosamine linked by beta 1 3 so this hyaluronic acid is interestingly found in connective tissues epithelial um, vitreous humor of eye in mammals um, and so on actually okay so hyaluronic acid is very very important um, especially in the connective tissues it gives you some sort of a lubrication they are also found in the eyes okay so the biological applications development angiogenesis cellular migration extracellular matrix remodeling mediation of uh, inflammatory response so hyaluronic acid is found in the human body and um, it's got a lot of uh, uh, requirements so hyaluronic acid uh, um, is also used widely as a biomaterial but uh, the production generally by bacteria is very very low. So it is made up of uh, uh, these type of uh, glucuronic acid here and acetyl uh, D glucosamine on this side. Okay, so what are the properties? It contains repelling anionic groups. So as you can see here, okay, so we have the anionic group because of the acid there. So it contains repelling anionic group which binds cations. So if there are any cations like calcium, 2 plus or magnesium, uh, sodium and water molecules also. Okay. Um, so it's got very good hydration property. So um, in solution, hyaluronate occupies a volume of 1000 times then it is dry state. So it expands quite a lot in the presence of water because of the um, anionic groups. So it ability to bear compressive loads in vivo. So it provides lubrication. So it expands quite a lot, almost thousand times um, water, okay, in the solution form. And also, it's got very good compressive loads, and it's also very good lubricant, 
okay. It also exhibits viscoelastic property. So, it is used biological absorbers, lubricants, okay, especially if there are uh, joints where the lubricant lubrication has uh, gone down because of orthoporosis or age, um, hyaluronic acid injection is a very good uh, example. Fabrication of hydrogels, okay, because uh, it can occupy uh, 1000 times, okay, because it absorbs so much of water. So, the chain length and molecular weight um, are uh, very, very important in determining their properties. So, low molecular weight HA, it is involved in cytokine activity implicated in inflammatory response. That means, low molecular weight you are talking in terms of uh, 10 power 4 Dalton. Whereas, if you take higher molecular weight like 10 power 5 Dalton, it inhibits cell proliferation. You can see, okay, there is a lot of difference, low molecular weight uh, and high molecular weight uh, inhibits cell prol proliferation. Whereas, smaller fragments like 1 to 4, um, they have positive effect in promoting vascularization during injury. Okay. So, it helps uh, after an injury the vascularization. So, generally uh, one is looking at uh, um, very, very low molecular weight fragments like this or like this. So, large fragments, there are no significant effect. So, correct use of correct molecular weight and chain length are very, very important. So, as you can see, the low molecular weight um, involved in cytokine activity for in inflammatory response, higher molecular weight in which cell proliferation, very, very small fragments, um, they help in vascularization during injury, larger frag fragments have no um, uh, use. So, one needs to select or uh, de design or um, synthesize the correct molecular weight, uh, hyaluronic acid. Applications, it is used in ophthalmic uh, drug delivery, okay, because uh, it absorbs a lot of moisture, uh, so it's, it can be used in uh, um, ocular region. Ideal matrix for covalent attachment of drugs because it's got a, a C double bond O negative charge. Shows twice the retention in contrast to free drugs. Okay, so when we put with the HA, uh, it retains more time. Different formulations such as gels, solutions, hydrogels, all these can be prepared with the um, hyaluronic acid. Okay, liposomal dermal drug delivery. So, in hyaluronic acid conjugated to surface of liposomes okay, and through cross-linking. So, we can encapsulate almost uh, 80 to 90 percent um, of the drug. So, it also helps in HA conjugated liposomes to cellular monolayer in culture, um, whereas uh, such things do not happen when we do not have the HA at all. Okay. Drug delivery for cancer treatments. There are some examples of drug delivery for cancer treatment. Sodium butyrate, uh, for example, it is an anti proliferative drug in the treatment of cancer. It has got a very short lifetime, 5 minutes in vivo. But um, butyric ester derived HA, and when we use this together, this bypasses this particular constraint. So, uh, it goes even up to 2 hours uh, internally. So, the HA gets um, completely internalized through CD44 receptors. Okay, so, we get very good uh, anti-proliferative response in MC of breast cancer cell lines also. So, um, the drug alone, it is a very good anti-proliferative drug, but it has got a very short half-life, half life, 5 minutes. But uh, when we use uh, butyric ester derived HA and um, use that as a drug delivery vehicle for this particular drug, we can extend it to almost 2 hours and uh, we get very good anti-proliferative activity and this has been tested. Of course, uh, they have still not come into commercial but these are some experimental studies, okay, scaffolds. So, if we want to uh, design uh, scaffolds, photopolymerizable HA like a meta acrylic anhydride hydrogels used in hat web applications, okay, HA combined with the polypyrrole increases local vascularization when implanted into rats. The benzyl derivatives of HA, there is a commercial product, they can be used for tissue engineering of cartilage. Uh, human clinical trials are in progress okay, for the benzyl derivatives of HA. Uh, visco supplementation for knee osteoarthritis. Like I said, um, when the uh, lubricant between uh, in the knee joints uh, get depleted because of age or arthritic uh, problems, um, then HA could be injected um, as a supplementation. So, cyanovial fluid replacement with the intra articular injections of hyaluron okay it uh, it can be it has been tested even up to 3 months 
uh, and there is a commercial product called Synvisc one injection of hyaluron this was approved um, in US FDA in the year 2009. Uh, so, it is a supplementation for arthritis osteoarthritis especially when the synovial fluid uh, gets exhausted because of uh, arthritic problem or old age. So, uh, quite a lot of applications of hyaluronic acid, but the production is still a big issue. Um, so, it is still being used in very small amounts uh, uh, commercially. Next comes chitin. Chitin as you can see it is got a acetyl group uh, N acetyl group okay, that is called a chitin. It is an N acetyl glucosamine polysaccharide. So, we have the polysaccharide here. Okay, so, we have the uh, acetyl group attached to the nitrogen I mean ok. Now, it is most abundant next to cellulose made of monomers of units of 2 acetamido 2 deoxy. So, we have uh, um, ok acetyl here ok the glucose connected through uh, we here we have the beta linkage ok alpha means it would have been down beta this is beta linkages 1 4 as you can see the 1 and 1 2 4 ok 1 4 linkage. So, we have the C T position uh, when we have the night and amine that is replaced uh, here by ok we have the acetyl group. So, if uh, I remove this acetyl that is called deacetylization that leads to formation of chitosan. Chitosan also has uh, very good uh, important properties. Um, so, when we remove this acetyl and um, when we put H here that is called deacetylization, chitosan ha is much more hydrophilic than chitin. Okay. So, degree of deacetylization generally can vary between 30 to 95 degrees that is called DD. Uh, this is constituent of exoselectin in animals like uh, crustaceans, mollusks and many insects ok also found in cell wall of certain fungi ok. This polymer for commercial source by product of uh, fishery industry also chitin is found quite a lot from fishery fish uh, scales ok. And chitosan is more readily soluble because uh, we are removing the acetyl group and putting H. So, it becomes more hydrophilic unlike chitin ok chitosan is more soluble. So, chitosan how do you make um, we remove the acetyl group. So, we have deacetylase enzyme. So, it forms NH2 here ok. So, we the degree of uh, deacetylization could vary 30 to 90 percent. So, we can increase the solubility further and further by deacetylizing more and more. So, it is insoluble at pH greater than 7 ok pH less than 6 positively charged amino groups. Um, so, they aid uh, solubility. So, if you look at the functional groups here uh, we have uh, the amino group at C 2 position primary and secondary alcohols ok. This is the primary alcohol these are secondary alcohol groups at C 3 and C 6 position. So, all these help uh, and uh, in functionalizing this polymer. So, I can functionalize this polymer either at this position, this position and this position. So, it is highly functionalizable. So, there are a lot of papers uh, if on chitosan. So, if you go to PubMed and look at applications of chitosan, you will see lot of modifications uh, to this because of so many different functional groups. So, chemical modification. Cationic property uh, leads to interaction with negatively charged molecules because uh, ok. So, we can have a plus charge. So, negatively charged molecules negatively charged proteins start interacting with them. Uh, degradation of chitosan determined by uh, degree of deacetylization crystallinity. So, it can form very crystalline surface um, the acetylated residues of chitosan targeted by lysozyme ok that particular enzyme. Uh, so, higher the degree of deacetylization more crystallinity slow degradation. So, if I have very high um, um, deacetylated uh, material chitosan then it forms a very good crystal structure and so the degradation is also very very slow. Whereas, if the um, crystal structure is less that means, if you have less deacetylization then can degrade much faster ok. This uh, particular um, ok picture is taken from uh, this particular reference. So, antibacterial of activity of chitosan it attacks negatively charged groups on the cell wall by positively charged chitosan. So, as you can see uh, we have positively charged N plus. So, they char attack the negatively charged groups on the cell wall 
and so cell wall breakage, lysis of bacterial cell happens actually. So, the chitosan exhibits antibacterial property. Uh, they also bind to bacterial DNA and interferes with the bacterial transcription. So, these are the antibacterial activity of chitosan. It is used as a dietary supplement, it lowers low density cholesterol, okay. So, low density cholesterol is uh, involved uh, in many um, uh, issues, cardiovascular issues and so it helps in the weight loss. Um, so, it is used in drug formulation as I said uh, the chitosan could be modified quite a lot, it has got three functional different functional groups, the um, primary uh, OH, the secondary OH and the NH2. So, many drug formulations are made, microparticles, liposomes, granules, gels for oral and parenteral drug delivery. Um, it can be physically or chemically cross-linked, we can cross-link this to improve their stability of this uh, chitosan. Um, so, chitin is also used in wound dressing. Okay, the ability of the N-acetyl glucosamine to accelerate the rate of tissue repair. What is this N-acetyl? Uh, like I said, this is the N-acetyl, okay, N-acetyl glucosamine, okay. So, the ability of N-acetyl glucosamine to accelerate the rate of tissue repair, prevents formation of scars and contraction of the skin. This chitin, chitosan in sprays, gels and gauge, effective in restoring subcutaneous architecture. Sprays effective in superficial lesions, gels repairing shallow lesions, pleasing aesthetic. So, as you can see many of these advantages are surface. So, we are not bothered about uh, mechanical strength or mechanical stability, okay. They are uh, used as sprays, uh, scars, tissue repair, um, aesthetic factors, slow healing dermo, epidermal wounds, okay, hydrogels, uh, burn wound healing. So, all these are surface applications um, because chitosan chitin they have a very good uh, um, functional groups okay so they are also very good in um, wound healing applications burn wound healing and uh, because they ha also have the antimicrobial properties um, we can use them as such and uh, they can target uh, especially ms um, mrsa that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus strains also or we can um, impregnate uh, anti uh, antibiotics so that uh, it gives you an added antibiotic activity, okay. It is also used in oc ocular drug delivery vehicle for topically applied vancomycin, okay. So, we can combine it with vancomycin for um, uh, delivery especially in the eye region. Um, so, the bioavailability when you um, have chitosan as a drug delivery improves and also it is very, very cost effective. It's been even tested as um, drug delivery in anti-tumor applications. Highly toxic, poorly water-soluble anti-tumor drugs. Um, when you encapsulate with chitosan-based or degradable system, so it's very good drug delivery, and it degrades at the uh, um, uh, location where it has to deliver the drug. So it can take care of highly toxic drugs. So, hyaluronic acid, another biomaterial, um, biopolymer which I talked about earlier, coupled with chitosan nanoparticles containing um, a anti cancer drug like oxalip latin, it gives very good local drug delivery concentration in colon tumors. So, as you can see, they can form very good drug delivery, and um, at the point of uh, discharge, they degrade. So, that is the advantage of this actually, okay. Now, look at alginates. Okay, these are um, connected by the beta D manuronic acid, beta D manuronic acid and alpha L gluronic acid. Okay. So, alginates with high gluronic acid, they are suitable for biomedical application because they are very easy to process and low. So, they are uh, very good if you have very large amount of this. So, they are combination of beta D manuronic acid and alpha L gluronic acid. So, these are polysaccharides produced by seaweeds, okay, different types of seaweeds. Um, alginic acid, this is anionic linear copolymer. This is an anionic because we can form COO minus because the H can come out. So, it is got a, this is called a M block. This is got a G block. G is the gluronic acid. The uh, M block is manuronic acid. So, they are arranged uh, GG, MG, MM, different combinations of it actually. So, the GG is stiff 
more soluble at lower pH than GM. Okay, GG is stiff, more soluble. Um, that is why it's suitable for biomedical because it's stiffer. Uh, G content varies. Okay from 40 to 70 percent. The molecular weight we are talking in terms of 50 to 100,000 Dalton. Uh, molecular weight influences the viscosity in solution. So, depending upon the molecular weight, viscosity varies, higher the molecular weight it becomes more viscous. Uh, so, they can gel in the presence of uh, cations like uh, calcium 2 plus and barium 2 plus. Why is that? Because we have CO minus. So, they can nicely um, take in different cations. The carboxylic acid groups of sugar in G block of adjacent polymer chains cross link with these cations and forms the gel. So, the stiffness of the gel depends on the molecular weight, distribution of alginate polymer, okay, that means depending upon the M by G ratio, stoichiometry of alginate with the chelating cation. So, that is how the stiffness looks like actually. Okay, so, that what are the disadvantage? Lack of enzymatic degradation. Okay, there are no enzymes which can degrade this particular material, that is one thing. But uh, we can use uh, uh, acid or alkali hydrolysis and then reactive oxygen species. So, it has got inert nature, so the cells do not attach to that. They have to be used in combination with other polymers. So, alginate based hydrogels can be used for drug delivery vehicles for low molecular weight drugs and proteins. Uh, so, the rate of drug release depends on the drug alginate interaction, charge polarity, hydrophilic molecules released quickly, hydrophobic molecules get released uh, very, very slowly. Okay? So, that is uh, the difference uh, between these actually. Okay? So, they have some disadvantages because, uh, they, because they are inert cells do not get attached to that. So, we need to use uh, with the other uh, biopolymer okay? or even a synthetic hydrophilic polymers. Okay. So, we will uh, continue further on these uh, biopolymers in the next class also. Thank you very much.